This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. In the math prompter.java. Okay, so we have a council class. Oh, yeah, math prompter. All right. Write the method prompt for number. Two, prompt the user to enter a number and return the number entered. Shockingly, they want prompt for a number. Prompt the user for a number. All right. Don't forget to close the scanner object. Ah, scanner. We haven't seen that in a while, but that's fine. After receiving input, write the method get absolute value. All right. So first things first, prompt for number. And it looks like they actually provided us that. Oh, and they have the scanner. Okay. Prompt the user to enter a number and return the number. Okay. So if I'm prompting the user to enter a number, interesting. We created this object scanner and we gave it the, uh, the instantiated object or the instantiated class name as input. Now we've seen that before. So now we want to ask the user to input a number. They don't really give us an example of exactly what to say. So I'm going to do, I guess I'll just keep it simple. And they say, enter a number. So enter a number. It is. Uh, I did print guys and not print an LN for a very specific reason. Print LN forces uh, th the next line. So when they enter a number, it wouldn't be on the same line. And I really do want it to be on the same line, which is why I'm using print right next to where the question is. And then we need to close the scanner class and or the scanner object. Well, we named our scanner object or they did input. So put dot close. Bam. And then return zero. Heck no, right? That's not what we want to return. We want to return their input. So, oh, and we can't because we haven't gotten it yet. So what will we do for their input? Um, I'll say int num will be the variable name. And I'm going to set this equal to input dot. And input, guys, keep in mind, scanner class. And we've used this before. Next int. And we'll just grab whatever integer value they enter. And I will assign that to my new variable num. Maybe you want to call this value. I'm not really sure. Whatever you think's best. But now we need to make sure to return that number. All right. So that's looking good. Now, write the method get absolute value to return the absolute value of a parameter number using math.abs. Uh, and then this is the integer. Okay. So return the absolute value. And then it looks like it will be an int. So that being said, I can do int uh, dot, maybe I'll do result. And that's going to be equal to math.abs, right? Because we're using this, I know that the methods within the math class are static. So I don't need to instantiate a math object. I'm going to call abs directly or absolute directly. I'm going to pass it this number. And then I know I will get the result, which is going to be the absolute value of the number. Now I need to make sure to return that result. You could shorthand this if you want to be fancy, although I don't think it's as clear and do it in one line. Okay, this is looking good, but I'm sure there's some debugging that needs to be done because there always is. Uh, let's test this out. Do they already have? Oh, great. So it looks like we have some code here. Let's see what uh, what this all does. Enter a number. Uh, so we want the absolute value. So I'll do negative 15 and absolute value 15. Cool. And this all looks like it responded correctly. I'm going to do one more time and I'll do, I don't know, six and it should still, be... yep. Bing, bing, bing. Awesome. Onward.